Hey everybody, I'm Sander Klanenberg and you are going to join me on this course um, where I'm going to take you a little deeper into my latest production, um, a fresh record that hasn't been released yet. Uh, as a matter of fact, I just finished it on the spot right here in the Fader Pro Studios in uh, Denver, Colorado. I'm on tour in America. Uh, I'm on my third week. It's Monday now. I just played a lovely club here called Beta. Um, and Denver, as you may or may not know, is almost like the epicenter of, uh, of dance music since Beatport's based out of here. Uh, so it's always exciting to be here. As a matter of fact, 15 years ago, my first uh, gig in uh, the United States was right here in Boulder, which is close to uh, Denver. Um, I'm going to take you into the session. Uh, I'm going to explain uh, bit by bit um, how some of the parts and elements of this record came together. I'm going to take you uh, in depth um, on what my vision and my ideas are on how to personalize your uh, records, how to make your records stand out and be, um, you know, individual um, and, and something that's, um, you know, that's, that's close to you. Uh, I'm going to explain a little bit about um, layering, uh, layering bass sounds, um, uh, layering uh, pianos, and, uh, and try and sort of explain um, at least how I believe um, you can make your, uh, your records, you know, stand out. Um, for this record, um, this session that you see here is the end result uh, of a fairly long process. Uh, as with everything, uh, uh, these things don't, you know, come about in an hour or two. Uh, in this case, these are a couple of sessions um, brought into uh, into one. Uh, I'm quite excited about the uh, the outcome. Um, so, you know, I want to take you by the hand and um, go deep. So now that we added, um, you know, that sort of one note string to create excitement um, and fill up that sort of part of the, the spectrum without cluttering the track too much, um, I'm going to show you another trick to sort of make your, tra your track come, come alive. I think at the end of the day, what we all want to do is we want to dictate these computers to become human, right? I mean, that's, that's in essence what we're trying to do here. Um, and there's a few tricks uh, that I've picked up along the way in the last 20 years that I love sharing with you guys here today. Um, so here we have the, 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 the piano, um, and as you, I'm going to solo it out here, um, as you hear the piano is, uh, you know, what it is, it's the layers and stuff. What if we go into this file, um, and we single out, uh, in this case actually, I'm going to just cut this part of the file out. As you actually may see, um, I'm using flex pitch control on this, uh, as you can see these little dots here. Um, come uh, apparent once you've um, analyzed your file with your polyphonic stretch. You can you can create real nice um, sounding um, uh, uh, pitches because basically this was originally, as I may have told before, 124 BPM recording. Uh, but I wanted to go to 125. Uh, we'll go into 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 flex pitching in in uh, in, in, a, in a little while, and I'll, I'll show you exactly how that works. It's super easy. Um, but for now, we're going to use this this file, which looks a little funny, but that's just because uh, I've got the uh, flex on. So once I've double clicked it in Logic, at least you know you can go to the sample editor, and then there's a few tricks that you, and things you can do here. You can normalize, which for instance you know would boost everything to to zero, uh, invert, trim, uh, fade out. But you can also reverse, and in this case, uh, we're going to create an extra element to this layer. Um, to create a sort of sense that it is alive or lively played or lively brought to you. Um, reverse is very simple, it just takes a little while, and here you have it. So now we've reversed these pianos and these chords, um, re reversing them gives it that sort of cinematic uh, effect, you know, like, like Trent Reznor or, you know, some of the, the Depeche Mode productions or, you know, any, any in that sort of world, they, they do that trick a lot. They, they create layers of reversed guitars or pianos or, or anything kind of sort of detuned, and it creates this really nice sort of like atmospheric, um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's hard to grasp what it, what it exactly does, but it, but it makes me feel good, you know, so I, I use it. Um, and to, to make this even interesting, or more interesting, uh, we're going to put some, some, uh, some, uh, some tape delay on here. Um, make sure that if you use delays like this, that you low cut, you cut out the, 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 the low end of your delay so, so that the delay has room, you know, to breathe into your next chord. Uh, but also a little bit of high, I'm going to 
bring it to 15,000 hertz just to, just to give it that sort of unique space for, for it to live. Um, I'm gonna play it again here. I kind of believe that maybe this is uh, a little too much, you know, uh, back to back. Um, so if we want to create it as a sort of extra little layer, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go into track automation. I'm going to go to volume. I'm going to open this up a little more and I'm going to um, make a nice little cut here and make a nice little cut there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have this be fairly loud but I'm going to cut it down a little bit here. Um, I'm going to just at random. It doesn't really matter. It's almost like sort of painting. You just throw it in there and kind of see what happens. You don't need to be super tight when it actually, it's even better if you do these things to just be a little at random so it becomes uh, even more alive. After you've done the work with 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 the volume, um, and that you can you can actually see it already here that you know the the volumes is a little more random. Here, here here's obviously a loud one. Here's a, a lower one. Um, I'm gonna single it out. I'm gonna play it to you guys. As you may notice, this one's a little higher in key than uh, than that one, and that's that's super easy to do. You just you play around with your pitch and see where it fits nicely, you know, where it has its own sort of space to, 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 to live. I'm going to show you exactly what happens um, after I've um, brought this all back to where we started, which was obviously a non-reversed element. Uh, you, again, you need to bounce, you know, what you've done uh, to, to, to uh, have that survive. Uh, I'm going to go back here, take this out. Um, is on, and we're going to go in there and reverse it back. So now we have this little extra layer here. Combine that with the with the original piano. And now you have it, you know, you have your simple Steinway EX24 preset um, and you put it in the digital washing machine and create all these little layers, unique layers, and all of a sudden it's like, uh, you know, it becomes your sound. And, and in, in essence, that, that's what I really want to show you guys, like how can you uh, create something that's yours and that's unique. And in order to bridge something like that, in order to have people forget, you know, the em emotive uh, elements here. Um, in this case, come up with um, with a little weird wobbly sound that's going to lead us into that bass line. And that, that is really going to signal the departure of where we were and sort of introduce where we're going to be. Uh, those uh, moments in a track are extremely important. They kind of make or break a track. It could be anything, I'm not going to lie. This is a fairly dramatic moment uh, because, I don't know, you know, I'm cool guy, I can take a couple of seconds to <laughs> introduce my shit. But um, it could be, you know, a reversed crash. It could be a drum roll. It could be uh, anything that sort of introduces, um, you know, a change in your, uh, in your arrangement. Um, and in this case, um, going from, like I said, the emotion to uh, the big uh, dry bass line. Um, in order to accomplish this, I have to give credit to my boy, uh, Thomas. Um, it's a incredible sound designer and engineer and, and, and co-writer who I work with uh, quite a bit just because he's extremely uh, talented and much better than I am so I can hide be behind his talent sometimes. And he came up with this idea. Um, it comes out of the um, Silent. Um, he used a Monster Kick which, you know, how he does it I never quite understand but he used Monster Kick to, um, to create the following sound.
Now, on its own, you would kind of go like, right, okay, so what is this going to do? Um, well, I'm going to show you exactly what this is going to do. Um, the notes are very simple. They're kind of sort of related to the bass line. Um, as you can see, there's a little automation here with uh, uh, the, the reverb. So the reverb in this particular uh, moment increases during the, the, the process of what happens. And also, um, there is a... Um, a filter and that's going to go along with that and the filter so um so that's really interesting but it's obviously not going to be um noisy enough to really make a difference um so what I then did was like, okay, you know, we have this little noise, uh, but what we really need here is an extra emphasis on the one in the form of a snare. Um, and once that's in place, you know, all of a sudden, it becomes a much more um, exciting uh, little moment. So, I think this is something that's exciting. I think this could live between the two segments. Um, I'm gonna put the vocal in there as well. There's a little extra vocal element that I haven't introduced before, which, in, intru which I will introduce now. Um, and it's basically part of how this song is gonna end up being called. <laughs> This is pretty exciting. We were in this emotional moment here. So there we are, and now you know we obviously want to listen to that um, with the bass line. Uh, I can't wait because I know how it sounds, and I can't wait to share it with you guys. Um, here you go. I, in the meantime, just to keep my CPU available, uh, I did another uh, stem of that specific specific wobble sound. So I'm going to turn that on right now, and I'm going to switch this baby off because we used it. Actually, I'm going to get rid of it quite quickly because. Um, we don't particularly gonna need that anymore because I now have a really nice piece of audio that uh, I can put into place.